Using Roll20 to play Ironsworn is powerful and incredibly useful uh, for players interested in solo role playing, especially using digital tools and resources uh, that come with the game. Maybe you checked it out on Roll20 uh, a couple years ago when the game was initially released back in 2018, 2019. Uh, but it, the character sheet in Roll20 has actually been updated and improved quite a bit in the years since. Uh, that it is very robust and very useful that you can uh, access all the oracles and all kinds of stuff from the character sheet. It's super, super useful. Uh, so I highly recommend revisiting it if you haven't had that opportunity. Hi! I'm Woody. This is the Woodland Fellowship, a channel where storytelling and adventure gaming meet. And so today we are going to be making a character uh, and for a solo role-playing campaign we're going to be doing on this channel uh, in just a little bit. When it comes to Ironsworn, it is very important uh, most of the time that you start when it comes to character creation, you start with a concept first. You kind of think about what kind of character you'd want to play. And so if that's something that is a struggle for you, I actually have a video, and I'll put the link for that in the description below. I have a video that goes through four ways that you can generate ideas for creating a character, and then ways to flesh out those ideas uh, to make them more interesting. So definitely check that out if you haven't uh, already. Uh, but we are going to be doing uh, yet another technique uh, for these character concepts, and we're going to be using the oracles and the dice to tell us uh, different things and that therefore generate some inspiration for the character concept. And then with that character concept, we can know which options uh, to choose uh, that are, are in and, and available in the game. So what I have done already is I've created a game. I haven't invited anybody to it, and I'm not going to, sorry. Uh, but I've created the game in Roll20. And uh, when you create the game, you have an option through a drop-down window to select uh, the character sheet that you'd like to use. Uh, and one of those that's built in from Roll20 is Ironsworn. You can just go ahead and select that, create your game. Uh, clearly, I've already added in a whole bunch of art assets for the background and the maps and world building. I've done all of that already. So what we're going to do is just create the character. So what we do is you go make sure that you are in your journal tab right up in the top right. And then you choose add. It wants to know if you want to add a character sheet, a handout, or a folder for which that you can then use to organize your character sheets and handouts. We are going to create a character sheet. And you'll notice that Roll20 just auto-generates a name. I Honestly, I don't like any of those <laughs> names that ever populate. They seem kind of weird and wonky. Uh, but you can give credit and, and who can control it and so on. I'm not going to do any of that right now. You can add information and bio stuff. It, uh, probably it'll be easier to do that later. I'm just going to keep it as is because I'm going to be renaming this character in a moment. So I just go ahead and hit Save Changes. And then it defaults to your bio and info uh, section of the window here. And it's going to be all blank, which makes sense because we didn't add anything. What you really care about is this second tab right up here that says Character Sheet. You click on it and uh, it'll give you, hey, translation support, you know, cool things. You can close that down. You don't need to keep that open. Now, this is very important. You will want to click on the character uh, side of this in terms of the sheet type, not shared. Uh, the shared sheet is what you use if you have multiple people playing, maybe in a co-op style game. So you could do that, but then this would be a separate character sheet just for that, and then you'll need to create a new sheet for each individual character. Um, so that way, like, you'd have shared supplies and that kind of thing. That's the purpose of the shared uh, character sheet. But we're just going to do character. So I go ahead and I click there. All right, and so this is where it defaults is the summary. Now, before I even look at or care about any of the statistics or vows or any things on the summary, we are going to be using some oracles, right? Because I don't have a character concept. I don't have anything here. I've thought through some things what would be interesting, but I want to see what the oracles have to say about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here right above the summary button. You'll see the oracles. You go ahead and click there. And it, I believe it, yeah, it defaults to the Delve side of this, which uh, Delve is an expansion to roll. I'm sorry, an expansion to Iron Sworn, which is 
a very good expansion, by the way. The, the expansion costs money to get, and I'd recommend that. Uh, but the base game, Iron Sworn, is, is free. The character sheet on Roll20 does include all of the information, both from Iron Sworn and Delve, and in terms of the moves and the oracles. Uh, but like how to use them, that sort of thing is not necessarily going to be here in Roll20. You'll want to have those, uh, those other supplements there. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to just use the, the base uh, oracles from Ironsworn. And what I'm going to be looking for is, uh, let's just find a better name first. So I'm going to scroll all the way down under names, and you can choose Ironlander, Elf, Giant, Varu, or Troll. I would use this process to create NPCs as well. Uh, so I'm going to just choose an Ironlander name. So I go ahead and I click on this uh, die button here, and it just generated a word uh, and a name right up here. 159, I see Beltran. Ooh, that's a good name. Now, one of the things that I also recommend, especially at this stage, is uh, whenever you are rolling for some of these ideas, you can swap numbers around, or you can roll multiple times, or both. Uh, that way you can have it be a semi-random selection. Uh, that way you can use your reason and your ideas and, and just what sounds fun and interesting to you uh, to generate some, some things. So that way you don't feel like you're stuck with whatever the option is that, uh, that, that rolled. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll names again as well. I'm going to roll two more times. So, Edan or Becca. I like Beltran, honestly. I like, I, I like Edan at one point, so maybe I'll use that in somewhere like somewhere else. Uh, but I like Beltran. Beltran just has a, has a good name to it. So, I'm actually going to go up to my character name here and go ahead and delete all this. I'm just going to write... Beltran. And that has actually automatically updated the name in Roll20. So if I go back to my journal, you'll see it has uh, been renamed up here as well, which is super nice, right? That you don't have to go in and edit it and then change it and so on. Like, it's really good. Okay, so Beltran. All right, now the next question when it comes to Beltran, that is going to be um, what what did Beltran do, or maybe what does he currently do, um, as part of his background? What maybe did he do before becoming an Iron Sworn or a, uh, you know, an, an adventurer and so on? So uh, I'm going to just go ahead and choose Roll as the option here under the character section. Ooh, 87 is the total, and I get Raider. Raider. Now. Let me demonstrate how you can swap this out here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the actual word itself, and you will see uh, it will give you all of the the results and what the full table looks like. All of these will do this. So the button on the left is to roll it, but the button on the right just shows you it. Uh, so 87 is Raider. What is 78? If I swap the numbers around, what do I get? 78 is a warrior. I'm going to just put that in my chat just as a reminder. So Raider or Warrior. I'm going to roll one more time because I like having options here. Outcast. Awesome. And then what is 12? Performer. All right. Yeah. All right. So he was either a Raider or is currently a Raider. I like the idea of a former Raider. That could be interesting and has a little bit of a sordid uh not legal past <laughs> and then he can uh, you know go forward from there although being a a warrior has an interesting connotation maybe he was like in the military and was more on the up and up and has since uh maybe moved on uh from a you know a formal connection or fealty to a particular um military unit but you know, has maybe a, a different reason. We're going to move on to that in a little bit. Um, let's let's hold on to those just for the moment, because I want to understand what what is Beltran's goal? What is his goal? So that is the next thing right down here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll this. He wants to either refute a falsehood or what is two? Because swapping two zero makes it zero two. Uh, obtain an object. Hmm. I like the idea with the refute of falsehood if he was on the up and up, right? So maybe he was in the military and um, 
maybe he was falsely accused of something and so he was he was disbarred um, and so he's looking to to refute that falsehood he's trying to clear his name that's a really engaging kind of story i like it uh, i do want to just roll again one more time just to see what other options we have pay a debt or what's 71 advanced status now you don't have to put in your extra options in the chat like i am if you are going to be following along or doing something similar like i am um, but i just find it's it's nice because you can go back and look through your your chat options and look at the results of roles uh, so that way you don't have to take super copious notes yourself being that the uh the software the website is doing that for you in in some <laughs> sense uh, so that way you can refer to that a, a little bit here i'm really liking the idea that he's looking to refute a falsehood about uh being a you know needing to be justifying himself right and and yeah, I'm, I'm liking that. So I'm going to move on from that. Okay, let's look at descriptors. Now, I often recommend having at least three descriptors. I would do this for NPCs as well. Uh, but this is something that can help clarify just overall personality, uh, appearance, that sort of thing. So I'm going to look at, at that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll this three times. That way I can just put in my descriptors as well. So bitter, jealous, and cruel. Oh, so he's not a good guy, <laughs> based on those rolls. What are the alternates? Uh, I'm just going to write them in. Okay, so bitter was 45. So what is 54? Is weary. Uh, jealous, what is 61? Quiet. And 60, which would be 6. Let me scroll back up. Generous. Yeah, the uh, bitter, jealous, and cruel... Really, it makes it hard to believe that he was. Like, it's hard to to make that an endearing character. Like, you can definitely empathize with being falsely accused, and you want that. But if he's not a good guy, you're just kind of like, I don't really care that he's falsely accused. You know what I mean? So you want to make a character. Well, at least I want to make a character uh, that is uh, worth rooting for. So I'm. I do want him to have. Uh, a secret and and a weakness of some sort so it could be in a, a character element uh, so I'm gonna maybe keep one of those uh, those difficult ones bitter makes sense uh, especially if you know he's been kicked out of you know his his military unit for false claims and his leaders and and his brothers and sisters didn't maybe believe him or maybe they did but they couldn't do anything like so yeah i think bitter makes a lot of sense jealous or weary cruel or quiet i think weary also makes sense that he's just tired he's been maybe on his own um but i also like generous because that is going to be the thing that um that is going to be the thing that makes us care about him is that you see that he's generous when the reality is he probably doesn't feel like he should be like he doesn't owe the 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 universe anything in that sense but he could still choose to be that so he's bitter he's weary he's generous in spite of of all of that okay okay i'm liking this i'm liking this um and in activity uh i think i might do i might use activity let's go ahead and enroll on this this is uh i'm going to be asking the question what is he maybe in the middle of doing when we meet him when we meet beltran oh yeah name's right up there uh so this is activity you want you don't have to but i like combining this with a theme and i'll explain that in a moment so i'm going to go ahead and roll activity which is preserving or what is fording or hiding. Ooh, okay. And then preserving or hiding what? So you'll see at the very top under plot, you have action and theme. These are designed that you would roll an action and a theme, and then they interact together. Um, so this would be under theme. I'll go ahead and roll that. Ooh, hiding a wound preserving probably not preserving a wound but what's the alternative of wound uh, that'd be 90 quest oh both of those could be really cool he's either hiding a wound 
preserving a quest. Maybe he already had a quest. He has another goal. He's honorable, even though he's been kicked out. Like, that can be cool. Like, I kind of like both of those. I'm going to I'm gonna write down both just in, just in case. Now, it's also very possible that as you're seeing these options that are popping up and how I'm interpreting them, you would probably likely interpret them a little differently. That's okay. Like, the whole idea of this is to generate that inspiration for your character idea and to get a sense of, of how that all works. Okay. Uh, one other thing that can be useful, and I might use this in, in a moment, uh, I'll just also point out, is the Ask the Oracle move. So when you click on it and kind of scroll up, you'll see uh, you have this option. This is for a simple yes or no uh, question and answer. So, for example, um, in the nature of, of my world, uh, magic exists. It's relatively rare, so not everyone practices it, uh, but those who do definitely have um, an eeriness to them uh, in, in that case. So it's possible maybe that is why he was falsely accused, is that uh, people just didn't trust him because of that. So I think it's possible, maybe even likely that, that Beltran knows at least one ritual. Um, but he's a warrior, so maybe not. It depends. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to say it's 50-50. So does Beltran know magic? I'm going to put that in the chat too. Does Beltran know magic? Okay, 50-50. Here we go. Yes. Yes, he does. Okay, so I'm going to choose probably at least one, probably only one of the three assets that we get. Uh, I'm going to choose one to be uh, a, a mystical ritual that, that he knows how to do. Okay, okay. So I think I have a good idea of where we're going to be getting started. So let's go ahead and look at the rules from Iron Sworn uh, itself. So starting with the, the character uh, section, which starts in chapter two, uh, and it goes through just all the ways of how to do it, where to start, how to read uh, your printed character sheet, and how to use markers and all of that, and assets, and how to place it. It's really, really useful. Uh, all right, so we already have a name. I'm going to come back to stats because it depends a little bit on, on a couple other things because uh, you can do these these elements in really any order. Um, but there are five main stats. You have Edge, Heart, Iron, Shadow, and Wits. So as you see, Edge, that is dealing with quickness, agility, and prowess in ranged combat. So that is the main uh, skill that would be used for using bows or, or yeah, ranged weaponry. Heart is dealing with uh, courage, willpower, empathy, sociability, and loyalty, right? Oh, they have a good heart, right? So if they have a high heart rating, they're more likely going to be able to forge bonds with people um, and just be more successful on the social side of things, convincing people, that sort of thing. Iron, physical strength, endurance, aggressiveness, and prowess in close combat. So iron is going to be the main stat for melee combat. Shadow is for sneakiness, deceptiveness, and cunning. And in wits is expertise, knowledge, and observation. Usually heart and wits are going to be the main stats when it comes to a lot of these rituals. And that is going to be uh, the key here as well. It tells you how to set your health and spirit and supply, which uh, uh, Roll20 has already maximized and defaulted to five in each of those elements. And momentum is based. So like a whole bunch of these things uh, automatically get, get set up accordingly, which is super useful. And I, we can address those things uh, as we go along. Uh, so let's start with a vow. Yeah, let's think about the vows here. So we have already kind of through these oracles have determined a little bit of what his his main goal is right and that is to um what was what was the wording again yeah refute a falsehood so what i'm going to do i believe it's right under summary you'll see that you have spots for vows derp, derp, derp. so the very first one right this is what it's going to be his vow is to clear his name from the false accusation that got him removed from his military position. And I can add some clarity to that as well. Now, when it comes to vows, 
uh, you are going to be making two when you create a character. The first one is a background vow. Uh, this is going to be really what guides and shapes the whole campaign, the whole story itself. Uh, and so it needs to be marked uh, on one of the two highest things. Either it needs to be marked as an extreme or an epic level vow because it, it should take a while uh, to be able to complete. Uh, but if, if and when you do complete it, you do get a whole bunch more experience points to uh, unlock stuff and add stuff and so on. I'm going to just say for the moment it's extreme. I don't think it's quite epic yet, uh, but there there's room depending on uh, how dice rolls go, that it could actually be stepped up to the next level, to an epic level thing. Uh, there could be definitely room for plot twists of, you have no idea how, <laughs> what you're getting into. Like, you know, stereotypical stuff, there's room for that. But he could also just clear his name. But yeah, okay, so that is his background vow. And then the second vow, which we can uh, think about in terms of he's uh, preserving his quest. Uh, we can generate a quest and think about what is that quest that he was on and uh, how how is he going to try and complete that that quest in particular. Let's look at the next vow, which is his current quest that he's hoping to preserve after the fact. So let's go to our oracles. Let's see. There's a couple ways that we could do this. So I'm going to play around with some of these and just see what happens. So let's start with Settlement Trouble. Uh, this is one that works really, really well uh, for generating ideas for kinds of things. Uh, so let's go ahead and roll this a few times. So Corrupted by Dark Magic. So a settlement is corrupted by Dark Magic. That could be interesting. What is 54? So over here, allies become enemies. Oh. Okay. That actually could tie in pretty pretty interestingly. Let's roll maybe one more time. Nature strikes back. Oof, okay. <laughs> and 42. Cursed past. Oof. Oh boy. Okay. Now these these are of course designed to be something that's affecting a whole settlement. Uh, so maybe the military unit was sent in to assist with whatever this thing is. Um, I, I like the idea of the allies become enemies only because possibly something happened, maybe some sort of tragedy to the military unit that he was in. Those that survived weren't a really understanding what was happening, accused him of being the source of it, maybe being a bad omen because he, uh, you know, he casts some spells and some magic and so on. That could be uh, an interesting an interesting mix there. We also have Nature Strikes Back, so that could be something where, um, you know, dangerous overgrowth and creatures are, are hunting a town or, you know, those sorts of things. Hmm. But I think the Allies Become Enemies is a, is a twist that happened. I don't think that would be the original quest that he's trying to preserve. Um, so I like that idea. I think I might still take that because we can do whatever we want. <laughs> and nature strikes back. So I like, I'm liking the idea because it has a, a nice clear cut thing of what uh, a group of warriors would be likely brought in to try and solve and handle. Nature strikes back. Uh, so we could definitely deal with that. I think I, I think I know what we're going to do. I think it'll tie in really well with the Delve expansion as well. I think that there was a town that is beset by some sort of malady dealing with nature uh, and so these warriors were sent in to this dungeon this delve uh, ran into some serious issues he got blamed kicked out of his unit uh, after all of that and the problem is still there uh, so I think that is what is going to uh, what is going to happen what's that's what's going to happen there so I'm liking, I'm liking this. Okay, so let's uh, let's determine a name of the the village that he's in, because that is going to be, again, the the quest he is hoping to to preserve. Uh, let's see, quick settlement name. Let's go ahead and think of a good name here. We have Redwick. What is my alternative words or portion of words here? Twenty four and a hundred. I'll say that'd be zero one uh, for that one. So forty two white and then it was more so white more or red wick red more or white wick i don't like white wick that's <laughs> it just sounds kind of funny um red more is cool but i like 
I like white more also for different reasons, especially if nature is striking back. Now, I'm not sure on the nature of the nature. It could be icy or frozen. It could also be overgrown and jungly and forests. I'm not sure. We can we can determine that in a moment. I like I like red more. I like red more. Only because then that way it can be possibly um, dealing with either iron or there could be maybe a sordid history with it dealing with maybe a battle that happened there and so it became called the Red Moor uh, because, you know, it's just the wilderness, the moors, and uh, and it's red. So why? Why is it red? And like those sorts of things can generate some, some interesting dealing. There. Okay, so he is looking to... Um, solve the problem with red more because my question would be does does beltran have a a bond with red more or someone in red more i'm going to go ahead and roll that i think that might be a, a, another reason why he would be so invested in in this and also possibly another reason why if he brought his you know brothers and sisters in arms and bad things had happened that they're blaming him and got kicked out and so on. So I'm going to say it's likely that he has a, um, a bond with, with Redmore or someone there. So I'm going to say likely. What is the result? That is a yes. Okay. So he definitely has a bond with Redmore or someone there. We can look at that. Maybe he has has both. Um, let's generate a site that is affecting Redmore. So how we can look at our oracles? I believe it's under Delve. Yeah. Okay. So the Delve uh, ideas are pretty uh, pretty interesting here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just generate a name for the site near Redmore. So I'm going to first roll for the format. So I know it's going to be a description place of namesake. So I'll just go ahead and roll description. Desecrated. Oof. I might look at some of the options here. Alternative 65, so 56 would be iron. All right. Uh, what was it? Uh, description, place of namesake. Okay, what is the place? We're going to go ahead and roll this. Tanglewood. Okay, that totally fits the whole Nature Strikes Back thing. Uh, but what would be 59 Sea Cave? I mean, that could be interesting too, of nature, like an ocean uh, creatures or things from the ocean striking back. Although Tanglewood just seems really kind of cool to, to be there. So let's roll for a namesake. Garion. Ooh, that's a good name. What would be six? Or Milena. Let's go. Or Milena. So it could be the desecrated Tanglewood of Garion. Or Iron Tanglewood of Garion. Or Iron Tanglewood of Milena. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do Sea Cave. Well, that could be an option in the future, like because submerged uh, dungeons are always kind of interesting. There, you have other types of problems to deal with, uh, especially when it comes to lighting and fires and types of creatures that you can be fighting. But I like the idea of the Tanglewood being being that. I think desecrated makes sense just for the nature of there's some sort of malady that's happening. So desecrated is just a, a good name. Uh, for that. So desecrated Tanglewood of Garion or Milena. I'll hold off on that for the moment. All right, now the next thing that we could do is you look at there is a threat. So there's uh, categories. Now we already know that it's nature striking back just from what are other things that we've rolled. So it could be an environmental calamity. I'm trying to think if there's other options that we might want to choose. I'm liking the idea of doing doing this. Uh, so I have four options on here that I like. So I'm going to just customize something here. I'm going to just roll a d4. So the first one, if I roll a one, is a, uh, environmental calamity. If it's uh, number two, it's malignant plague. Uh, three, rampaging creature. Four, ravaging horde. Uh, and then it could be more, you know, nature-based horde. Maybe plant creatures or... Um, 
you know, mutated animals, you know, that kind of thing. That way it still fits within it. But uh, what we're going to do, we're going to roll 1d4. 3, okay. So that would then be rampaging creature. Oof, okay. Now what does this rampaging creature want? That is what these additional oracles are there for. So I go ahead and I choose rampaging creature. Yeah, there's a lot of things there. Okay, so what does this rampaging creature care about? Asserting control over a location. Totally makes sense. What's 18 as my alternative here? Expand its territory. I'm liking both of those, and especially if it's a tanglewood, maybe it's also growing deeper and deeper and so on. Okay, okay, I'm liking, I'm liking a lot of this. Um, we could possibly even bring in a monstrosity being being a thing, but I think it's going to have allies within the Tanglewood, uh, and we can go from there. Okay, so let's just go ahead and create the the site because that is going to be, I think, where we pick up. Is that even though his military comrades uh, have moved on, I think Beltran wounded after leaving is now venturing forth back into the Tanglewood, maybe from another direction, uh, a, spot, a spot that he hasn't been because it's maybe moving around. So let's go ahead and make a site too while we're at it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add. The site name, we already know that it is the Desecrated Tanglewood of Garion or Milena. Because Milena has a good, like, nature -y name to it, but Garion has a kind of almost a fallen hero sound to it, and that kind of fits desecrated as well. I'm going to go with Milena for the moment. Milena. Okay. Uh, I can add in my objectives and things like that in a moment, but let's go ahead and go to themes and domains. So I already know that domain is a Tanglewood. And that gives us a whole bunch of things that we can reference when uh, when we go exploring. And then our theme, what would be a theme? Uh, corrupted, that seems to fit. Desecrated. Infested also kind of works. Haunted works. But I think corrupted makes the most, the most sense. Yeah, so that there's just this weird dark ritual thing that happened there. Uh, yeah, I think that seems to fit. All right, so we have this outside of Redmoor, uh, and they are being assaulted by these creatures that are emerging from it. Um, we could maybe even start in, in Tinglewood, but anyway, let's go back to our vows, because that was the whole point, and that is going to be, I'm going to say, end the threat to Red. Redmore from the desecrated Tanglewood of Milena. Now, because this is a starting character, like that sounds pretty formidable, that there would be a number of steps to it. However, how the delves work is that it is a there's a separate tracker for your exploration of it to complete your task. Uh, so ultimately, this is just determining how many steps you need to to complete in order for you to be at a spot that you can most likely successfully take uh, take care of whatever that problem is. So I'm thinking that there would have at you'd have to at least travel there. I tell you what, I think this is going to be formidable because I think it was originally dangerous and I think that we're going to be picking up at the twist that was a failure to, to successfully venture in and so it's going to be formidable. That's what I think it's going to be because typically what happens with the vows is if you fail to complete your vow, like you attempt it and you fail, uh, it actually resets and I believe you just get one, one progress remaining and then it steps up uh, to the to the next level. Oh, I marked the wrong one. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. We want this one. Yeah, so that one is marked uh, with one progress. So that way, when our character will pick up, when we begin our uh, our our solo campaign, that is going to be 
uh, his starting point. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some bonds because we've already uh, found a couple things here. So we know that he has a bond uh, with at least someone or the town of Redmore. And I think he would have probably both. I think he would have both. But um, let's actually go to the Oracle just to just be sure. Um, I think it's likely. Uh, does he, uh, does Beltran have a family member? Let me let me make it a little bit more narrow. Does Beltran have a a wife in Redmore? A wife and family. One hundred. That is a yes. That actually counts actually as because <laughs> uh, it's a, a zero zero is what that would be. That is actually a match and so on a match and it's an extreme result or a twist has occurred um, I don't think I want to use any major plot twists just yet because some of that might be interesting I'm gonna just take that as an extreme yes so not only does he have a wife uh, I'm gonna say he has a wife and kids in Redmore so I'm going to say that uh, he will have uh, both a bond to Redmore, because that's where his family is, and he'll have a bond with his wife, because um, that will be something that maybe we can add her in as a character as well at some point, or maybe kids can pick up and, and take over. That could be really, really interesting there. Um, yeah, that could be interesting. Okay, good to know. Uh, what is the name of of this? Oh, I had, a, I had another name earlier, didn't I? Let's scroll up here. Becca? I could maybe use Becca. Becca is a good name. I think Becca is is good. And we can come up with names of the kids in, in a little bit. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to say he has a, has a wife named Becca. So that is going to be his bond. So I'm going to go ahead and add one for Redmore. You can add some details such as location. Well, read more. <laughs> you can add in other details too if you'd like. I'm not going to, at least for this moment. And then I already know that he has a... Well, that's actually a good question. Is Becca still in Redmore? Let's come back to... Uh, let's come back to her. Oracles. Ask the Oracle. Is Becca still in Redmore at this time? I think that is very likely. But depending on the danger, maybe he sent them out of town. So I'm going to say it's only likely. It'd be either almost certain or likely. Let's do likely. No, she is not. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, has she been captured or brought into the Tanglewood? I'm going to say that's 50-50. Oh, no. Okay. So that is another further reason why he is uh, going in alone to uh, try and save his wife. Cool. Okay. We can see why he's bitter then. Why uh, his comrades in arms have <laughs> have left him here. Although I'm going to say that he probably still has a bond with one of them. Like his his best friend in the service. I think that would be another, another good name. Um, ooh, that's probably where I could use the other name, right? What was the other name? Adon? Yeah, I'm going to say Adon. Let's go ahead and go to Bonds. All right, let's go ahead and add Details, Location, Desecrated, Tanglewood. Oof, Descriptors. I might add some extra Descriptors for her in a moment. All right, and then let's add in Adon. Location, I'm going to say unknown. Actually, that's a good question. Did Adon also maybe step, stay back and, uh, and go in with him? That would be actually really good of a best friend, you know what I mean? But hey, you know, maybe he's feeling bound. So um, I'm going to say 50-50, because that could be why he's bitter. He still has a bond, but he, that might be why he's bitter. So... Did Aedon stay back with him? No. Boo! Bad friend. Bad, bad friend. So I'm going to say unknown. Oof. Okay.
typically what they want you to do when it comes to bonds, um, you'll see that you actually start with three and then you mark a, uh, a single tick per bond that you have formed at the, uh, at the beginning of the game. So I'll have one, two, three. So not a full progress. The point of this particular progress tracker is over the course of the character's career, uh, when it's time to retire, this is uh, kind of like an epilogue tracker where you will do a role to determine uh, whether or not the the best future envisioned uh, happens or the worst one or something in between uh, in terms of their did they actually live happily ever after or uh, those sorts of those sorts of things okay so we have uh, we have all of that okay so now it is time I believe I think all that remains are choosing our stats uh, and our assets but let me double check our things here we're not going to start with any abilities at the moment although he could because he's wounded um, otherwise I would say that he might have treated the wound they got into an argument about what what to do next so he's been treated even though he's trying to hide the wound maybe hide that it's not affecting me as much but hide it from whom maybe he'll eventually try and hide uh, from Becca if and when he he finds her so yeah, we have almost finished. So I know that he has to do uh, at least one sort of, of spell, but he's a warrior. Uh, so let's start with looking at what we already know. So we go to assets and we can add these one by one. Uh, you'll notice that you have all of the assets from uh, from the, the game built in, but you can also make custom ones. Uh, and so speaking of, I actually have uh, some custom ones that I've made and I have some general descriptions of the original ones, but I also have some custom ones as well, depending. So I'm going to take a moment, think about uh, what I want to do, and then we'll be right back with that. All right, welcome back. Uh, so I want to just show you what what I was uh, thinking because I took some time to read through some things and uh, what would make sense. So here we are. So I have chosen uh, a, a three different assets because you choose three. The first one I chose is uh, Path, the Blade Bound. I'll be rolling to determine a name in just a moment. Uh, and I will have a free choice of which one of these to unlock and I'll be able to decide that in a moment as well. But basically this means that um, that to add to the the mystical nature of Beltran is uh, that he will have a uh, a kin blade that has some mystical uh, uh, like energies and abilities to it uh, that he will be able to use in combat, and so it's a sentient weapon that uh, that he has, um, and so that can kind of add another layer of that that kind of mysticism uh, that he would have for. Uh, for for that, I also chose naturally to go alongside with that uh, sword master. So uh, that comes with one of these unlocks already, and that's when he chooses to strike or clash, uh, and I burn momentum in order to make that happen. Uh, you get to inflict two extra harm, which is super super nice. Uh, and then if the fight continues, then he can add plus one to the next move. So if that doesn't just finish <laughs> the, uh, the fight after that, or is not able to finish the fight after that, then that's when it's just like, you know, so it's a finisher sort of move uh, accordingly. So most likely that's like a once per session or uh, per combat sort of situation, depending on how far apart the combats are. And then the third one that I chose is a custom one uh, that I added. Uh, so I pulled that from my, my list that I made here. So if you uh, wanted to do something similar, it's very easy. You just put in your name, you indicate whether there's names of things that you want to add in, kind of like what I have up here where you have the name of the blade. Uh, and then you just copy if you want to have just a text box or if there is an input individually for those things, just like with titles and so on. So I just copied and pasted added tracks. So I I will keep it in the view portion and this one will start with this first ability unlocked and there is room for a tracker because that is the the whole ability uh, so it's called telekinetic push initially it is something that I could only use against um, you know close combat opponents uh, but eventually I could uh, you know use it against ranged attackers and uh, push their arrows for example back at them and that's uh, that's really cool all right so let's generate a name for for the blade so let's go back to my oracles 
let's go to some names. I like the idea of having it having an elven name. So let's go ahead and look at what some of these elven names are. Okamis, Otani, and I'll roll one more. Lucia, okay. And what are our alternatives here? So 36 is 63. Well, anyway, that's five options. That's pretty good. Uh, what would be a good... I like I like the first one, Ukamis. It has a has a good blade name, although Anatu, Anatu hungers, right? You could have have some of those things. Um, Ukamis, Ukamis. Hmm. I don't know if I'm sold on any of these names. Hmm. Let's hear maybe some of the Vero names just to to see. Savine would be in uh, twelve instead of Savine would be Jasna. Let's look at one more for the Varu. Three, Vata, or 30, would be Zlata. Okay, so lots of lots of uh, vowels at the ends of the names of these in these generators. Okay, I like the name Savine, but not for for a blade, unless it would be something like Savine, um, like belong to Savine, and that's where it's passed down or the soul of Savine would be in it kind of a thing, but Ukamis just has a has a grittiness to it, so I'm going to stick with that. So let's go back to my assets. Ukamis. All right, and then what is he going to be good at? Is he going to be good at starting a fight, starting well? That could tie in well with this other ability, just to be able to end the fight. Uh, gathering information when listening to the kin blade, or when you strike to inflict savage harm, add plus one and inflict plus two harm on a hit. Oh, so this could be very deadly. Uh, but I think that he, I think he needs some skills that are outside of combat for when he's traveling and needing to acquire things. So I think he's going to gather information, and I think that would fit that he's a he's a warrior. But this is also why the military unit would employ him previously is that he could uh, potentially use these mystic energies to to guide the party maybe around danger or whether or not to trust someone you know those sorts of things could be really could be interesting but yeah gathering information is going to be useful all right so all then that we have left to do would be to uh, finalize the stats now that we know what Beltran is good at and possibly not good at. So we have to solve that and then also determine where on my map uh, is Redmore. So that way we have an idea of the world around and uh, and we can go from there. But let's start with stats because that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so in the base rules of the game, uh, you have one out of these five is at a rank of three. Two, two other uh, of these attributes are set at a rank of two, and then the remaining two remain at one. So you'll have two with one, two with two, and then one with three. So it'll make sense as we, we go through this here. So based on the character, I know that he is generous. He's also very clearly skilled, at least with, with his kin blade, his sword, but he also does magic, uh, and his magic does some wits. So I'm going to say he has good heart, wits, and iron. Uh, so that means edge and shadow are probably going to remain as one. So the question is, which of these, heart, iron, or wits, would be at a three? I think it's probably three for his iron, two for heart, one for wit. So how we edit it is not, not by clicking on these, because when you do that, it'll actually just roll as if you're trying to do a move using that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this edit button, and then now I can go ahead and modify the stats accordingly. Oh, shadow's staying the same. Wit is also going to be two, and apply. All right. Sweet. All right. So all then that remains is where is... Redmore. Where is Redmore? Now, I'm thinking uh, because the built-in sheet is tied to the locations in the standard uh, for uh, the Iron Lands, and this is of course not that. This is my own custom map that, that I have designed. Um, so let's look at our territories and cities that I have in, in this area. Uh, we'll think Wildermark, Silver Peak, I tell you what, let's actually just go ahead and roll on 
the die here. So I have a territory selection, so I have 12 of these locations, just so we can narrow down where in the Iron Lands uh, we, we are going to be. Um, so I'm going to roll, I think, three times. I'll just roll a d12 three times and just see what we get. There we go. Okay. Let's see what we get here. Oh, so it just didn't make the beep for me. <laughs> so 9, 12, and 5. I'll ignore the, the fourth one. So 9 is Malewood, 12 is Willow Vale, and 5 is Silver Peak. All right, so let's look at our map here. So we have Malewood, which is be really cool to start. Makes sense if we're starting in a Tanglewood area uh, for that there would be, but there's a lot of forest there. All right, so there's Malewood, Willow Vale, also makes sense that there could be that, or Silver Peak. So I'm either in these two areas or over here in Malewood. Ooh. Let's explore the actual map itself and see if we can see any areas that look like that uh, could have maybe a reddish area to it. I mean, maybe not, so let's kind of zoom in. So here's Malewood. Yeah, you have some, uh, what I was deeming maybe be swampy lands, but yeah, you could have some of these ridges. You have some forests in here, kind of on the border with, with New Hall. Mm-hmm. Maybe out of Orith. Yeah, there's some, there's definitely some options. There's a lot of forests, though, so it definitely fits Tanglewood. All right, let's go over to, uh, to Willow Vale which is all up in here. I imagine that a, a, it would be maybe in the foothills and the southern areas of Silver Peak, perhaps, but not Silver Peak proper that possibly we could be in. Especially with it being a moor, makes you think of hills and just general wilderness area. I'm thinking that it's going to be kind of right on this border here between uh, true Silver Peak um, territory versus Willow Vale. Kind of out in, in the wilderness. All right, so it's a Tanglewood, though, so you have kind of a foresty area affecting it. You have some forests all over in here. but you know, kind of lead into a swamp. So that could be kind of a really cool theme, especially with a corrupted area. So I'm thinking it's going to be kind of right over here, somewhere between this capital city of Praetin and Casto and Balwick. I think those are some major town locations I had previously identified. So let's go ahead and go to my art here. And I've <laughs> found some... Uh, some map icons from Skyrim because hey, why not? It's uh, it's great. All right, let's make sure. Yep, objects and tokens. I'm going to use the farm symbol for the name of the village. I think that makes sense. Uh, and they're being harrowed, uh, harassed, and so on. It's harrowing. I'm going to say that it's probably right here. Let's go ahead and add a name. And we will see the name as well that way it shows up there and then let's use there's a forest icon yeah there it is let's say that it's right in here all right perfect so we have our stats we have everything else from the character so i believe all that we need to worry about now is uh, playing the game. So we'll do that in another video. So thanks for, uh, for watching. See you guys next time.